Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. You guys get to meet my new friend, Rachel Santiago with Downtown Yoga Center. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks having for me. Thanks for being a fan of the podcast. Thanks for yeah. listening. Yeah. And I'm excited that you're here with us Yeah, today. I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Johnson City Living, you know the drill. What is your favorite thing about Johnson City? Okay, so I practiced for this, but I can't I actually pick just one. I have two if I, I'm allowed. I would allow three or four maybe. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so one of them is actually the university. I graduated from there in like 2016 and it's just such a great resource to have in our area. Um, they bring so much diversity, I think, but also just like the education and the arts and cultural events that they have really into all of that. And it's not just for like the students that are enrolled there, it's a community thing. Um, so I think it's like a really powerful force around here. Ah, I love that. that. And I, I think you're the first one to say TSU really? is ah. one of their favorite things, okay. which Go is box. really kind of cool. Uh, well, maybe we had Brian Nolan on here. He's the oh, president. He, he may have, yeah, said he that. had to have said that. I don't know if he did. Okay. He might well, not. we love ETSU. But, yes, um, I agree. I'm here because of ETSU. My dad moved here or yeah, to start the med school 50 years ago. Wow. And so, okay. Very not cool. quite 50, 45. So yeah. anyway. And it's, it's cool because it brings in people like that. It really does. Different walks of life and different specialties and backgrounds. And it's great for that. And yeah. I think it's really good for the whole community. I agree 100%. It is a huge catalyst to our, um, not only educationally, but also financially. It's a good financial booster right. for our area. And a lot of people who graduate stay here and continue to make our area awesome. Exactly. So that was number one. That was number you said one. you got two things. What's yeah, number two? Uh, the other thing is just the downtown community like mm -hmm. specifically. It's so fun and it's cool. And there's all these different businesses that are unique. Mm -hmm. um, obviously like restaurants, we've got some really great cuisine, but it's not just Southern food. It's not just like Appalachian. We yeah. have Greek and Since German. you were a downtownian, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. downtownian, downtown Johnson City, <laughs> What are your favorite, like go through the restaurants downtown. Oh. Just take our listeners through just downtown, like they were walking downtown with you and we're gonna, okay. we're, we're um, hanging out. Timber, my Timber. number, number yep. one hands Nathan down. Brand's been on he's here. You incredible. can go back to that episode. Yes. He is awesome. Yes. And his restaurant's fantastic. He's so talented. Yeah. Um, we tried to have him cater our rehearsal dinner for our wedding, but he wasn't available, but we love what he does. Yeah. Um, we really like Red Mez, they're great. Mm -hmm. And then Friedberg's is fun. I don't go there often because I'm a vegetarian, but they do have some options. Same, it's a little heavy for me. Yeah, but Carly but and I go to, to the Mediterranean Red Mez or Hamed Mez, however you say right, it. Right. We go there a lot, we love it. They're they're fun. Yeah. Um, I like Juan Sao a lot, of course, yes. Label. Yep. And then the coffee shops, I love all of the coffee shops. Um, so we got Dos Gatos. Dos Gatos, Blues Brews, Blues Brews, The Moon now. The Moon, yep. Um, Philosopher's Brett, House. I haven't been to the doors. Philosopher's House. It's nice. I've only been once. Okay. Um, their tea is amazing. They have the Willow Trees chai. If you've had, if you've yeah, had I the remember Willow the Tree Willow Tree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they have their chai recipe there, and it's very nostalgic. Um, That's cool. It's, it's great. Yeah. The owner of the Willow Tree was my son's elementary school teacher one of them. really yeah okay yeah. yeah i've met her in passing Terry. yeah super She's sweet great. yeah yep. she is great absolutely okay so those are restaurants you got coffee shops what else is cool about downtown uh the shops in general mm -hmm. um terrarium super fun i just yep. i had to buy some flowers the other day and i was able to just walk across the street from the studio and get a yeah. cute little plant um, even do uh, pierre's market pierre's is really nice too great addition yeah those folks are so cool. sweet they yeah. were on here as well yeah and for the people that live downtown especially i think that would be super convenient yeah just be able to walk you can buy clothes you can go to aslan hope and get a yep. fancy outfit if you're a lady yep or boomtown they're, boom they're our neighbors they're stuff. right across That's the street right. yeah. from us um i'm really interested in hunter's hearth the pottery place down here oh i haven't seen that yeah it's um i did pottery in school briefly okay. and loved it but they have classes but you can also get like a studio membership type thing i guess and just go in and throw whenever you want to which i'm really going to try to do this year it's like one of my new year's resolutions that's to get cool down there. yeah that cool. will be fun so 
so much diversity though in I the love it. businesses and stuff. It's fun. That's awesome. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up around here. I grew up in Bluff City. Okay. Um, I was homeschooled, and then my husband grew up in Rome Mountain. Okay. Um, also homeschooled, so that bears the question: How did we meet? If we were both. That's where I was going to go next. Um, Do we meet at a uh, like a co-op or something? Kind of, yeah. Taekwondo, actually. First. Oh, yeah. Nice. We did Taekwondo. I did it with my Mental dad, note, don't dad mess with my you. brother. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. She's gonna... did it for like 16 years. Loved it. Um, and he started, and so that's how we met, and we've been together since high school. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, how did you transition from Taekwondo into yoga? Um, or how did you get, yeah, we could start there. Or yeah, it kind of was a yoga? transition yeah. from one into the other. Um, I've always been into like wellness and fitness, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Taekwondo was a big factor in that. Um, and then I want to say I did my first yoga class when I was about 13. It's a strange story. Um, I don't know if you remember when McDonald's was doing like their wellness pivot. They started putting Dasani water bottles. I do remember Dasani sale, there. Yep. And they had these yoga DVDs. I don't remember it was, that. Yeah, one was yoga, one was Pilates. Did you get them with a Happy Meal or something? I think so. Something That's like cool. that. Some package. But yeah, a yoga DVD from McDonald's was my first exposure to yoga. Um, but I really loved it. I loved the Shavasana. It was just super relaxing. Yeah. Fun. So I just kind of picked it up from there. You know what I was thinking about? They don't have super size anymore. Do they not? I don't think. Mitch, is there super size too at McDonald's? I don't know. Like I went, I was thinking research. because there was a whole movie about it the other, you know, right. ten yeah. years ago, Super Size Me or whatever, and I think they may have gotten rid of it because I know there's a dollar menu and you can large stuff, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. I think they got rid of Super Size. They've definitely pivoted. So yes, they probably like we're getting rid of that and we're going to hand out yoga DVDs, yoga DVDs. to, DVDs. to these yep. little kids and maybe they'll get healthy. Absolutely. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's it, it was an interesting start. So you went home, threw the DVD in, started doing it, and yep. you were like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, and then and when you I got 13 to... I was 13, yeah, I was a I'm kid. assuming you are older than that now. Yeah, I'm, I'm 14 now. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was going to um, say 15, but... <laughs> when I went to college, when I was over at ETSU, I started doing yoga at the CPA, and then I started at Downtown Yoga Center as a client in 2017. It was one of my New Year's resolutions. Um, started with my brother-in-law. We did the three weeks for 35 thing and yeah. I was hooked. Um, I did my teacher training shortly after that and I've been teaching there since pretty much. That's cool. Yeah. Tell us about the downtown yoga center. What's, so are you the owner? I am. Okay. Yes, me and my husband. Awesome. And so tell us about that process and obviously it was going, so you must have transitioned. Yes. So tell us about how you took over. Yeah, um, so the studio itself was opened in 2016. The previous owner, Kim Blaine, started it. And um, I was taking classes with her. I, she led my teacher training, so I was spending a lot of time around her. And we had a uh, staff meeting in December of 2022 where she announced that she was looking to sell the studio. Uh, I didn't think much of it. I just went home and happened to mention it to Nick, and he's like, hey, <laughs> we should think about this. So we kicked it around for a little while, and I was scared. I was terrified, actually, because yeah. we had never owned a business before. Um, but everything just lined up perfectly. I was unemployed at the time, so I had the time and energy to put into it. Um, yeah, and here we are. Here we are. So you bought it in 20... The very beginning of 2023. Okay. Yeah, so it's been almost exactly a year. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Happy you. anniversary on Thank your, you. your purchase. Yeah. So you, you got a year in. What are some of the surprises as an entrepreneur that you would like to... Oh, um, I tell people that it was a steep learning curve. It was, it's been a blast. Like I've loved the whole thing. Enough, our clients have been great, so nothing's gone wrong. But um, the website crashed the week that we purchased the business because of the transfer. So website went down, had to rebuild that. Um, our sign blew down twice. Oh no. Like yeah. a month after we bought the place. You're like, hey um, lady. I know, yeah. Snyder Signs came through for us though. Go. They got us hooked up. But uh, we transitioned um, booking platforms, which has been great. We love our new one, but it was a another steep learning curve. Sure, and then getting all the clients to exactly. change their then, habit of Booking on this yeah, and then now. we're yeah. training all the clients too. Right. But we've all got it figured out at this point. So it's it's been smooth sailing for a few months now, which is nice. Okay, so we got the hard stuff out of the way. What yeah. have been the joys of being an entrepreneur? 
business owner? Um, honestly, meeting people, mm -hmm. like the clients especially. We same here. Get to I know the same people. people. Yeah, right? it's so yeah. much fun. And then people are so cool. They are cool and they're interesting and everybody's got different backgrounds mm -hmm. and we've got a really diverse group of clients. Um, so it's just cool to hear from everybody. And when they come regularly too, you're getting like little life updates from them. And mm -hmm. it's just cool to have those relationships. And then when we do community programs, uh, we do Yeehaw Yoga in the summers over in Founders Park. Or did you hear that, Mitch? Yeehaw Yoga. Yeehaw Yoga. <laughs> yoga and a beer kind of deal? Yes, yeah. Man. Yoga, and then you get a free half pint of beer over at Yeehaw, and then um, they're always donation-based awesome. classes, so we pick a different charity every month. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. So we're getting that lined up for this year, but we also did um, Meet the Mountains Festival last oh, yeah. year. Yeah, that was huge. It yeah. was really fun though. I got a crazy sunburn, but <laughs> we had a blast. <laughs> it was really nice. It was down by the lake, so it was really cool. Yeah, I think it's been good that they moved it over there. And yeah. I think it was a success this year and they'll probably keep it, keep yes. it going. Yes, yeah, I think so. I think that's what I heard. So tell us about the Downtown Yoga Center specifically. Like, mm -hmm. where is it? How do you get there if you're... Yeah, we I mean, are. I guess you could Google it now. You can Google it. Yeah, we're not hard to find. Um, we've got a big sign that hasn't blown down. It hasn't blown down. Um, You're right around the corner from uh, Label. From Label. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're on Spring Street and right across, across the street, from, the street Boomtown. from Boomtown. Yep. Um, it's a one way street. If you're lucky, you can get parking right in front of the studio. That was what that I was going to say. Where, where are we going to park, Rachel? Yeah, where? I, usually across the street or in the square um, okay. by Dos Gatos. There you go. That's a great That's place because then you don't have to cross that road. Yeah, just cut through the breezeway. Yeah. Smart, exactly, yep. smart. Tell us about the team you you have that teaches yoga there. Yeah, we've got a great team. Um, we inherited them when we bought the business, but I knew all of the instructors from working there. Um, we've got instructors that specialize in everything from vinyasa and power yoga to gentle yin, things like that. So we've got a good variety yeah. of classes. Um, but the instructors have been great and they were very um, gracious when we took over they gave us a lot of grace to you know learn and figure out what we were doing um they come in in emergency cases like if somebody needs a sub all of a sudden they're always they're a very supportive group of each other and mm -hmm. of us so it's it's nice that's cool yeah so talk to us about different classes you guys offer for people who were maybe listening who let's say they're just thinking about getting into yoga sure um what I always recommend for people that are brand new to yoga is either a gentle class or a yin class. Um, the or yin, a McDonald's DVD. Or a McDonald's DVD. That's a great place to start. You should start handing those out. I know. McDonald's yeah. should start paying me for advertising Amen. for that. Right. I like um, it. But our yin classes are really slow. Um, so it's a good way to start if you're like new to all of the terminology and mm -hmm. the poses and things like that. Gentle is probably one step up from yin. And then from there, we've got power yoga, we've got vinyasa, things like that. Um, but all of our instructors are really good at modifying. So okay. if you just walk in and tell them, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm new here, they'll be sure to accommodate. And I've been talking to a lot of people too about like hot yoga. Do you guys offer hot yoga too? Yeah, yeah. we have heat panels oh, in cool. our back room. We actually have two separate uh, classrooms. Nice. So our back studio room has heat panels and then our front studio has a rope wall which is unique to us. As far as I know, no one else around here has yeah. a rope wall. Uh, it's on both walls of the studio and the ropes just kind of help you get into poses more deeply uh -huh. or to relieve pressure from your joints, like sure. your wrists or your ankles yeah. or whatever. Um, so that that's a really unique class. That's fun. cool. Yeah. Talk to us about the benefit of having the heat on you when you're doing yoga. Uh, personally, I am not a like a hot yoga person right. at all. I don't like to sweat. But other people enjoy it because um, it just gets you sweating a lot more. So you're a lot more active. It gets the blood isn't circulating good to get, like, better. Isn't that good for you, Rachel? Why oh, don't absolutely. you like this? Let's, let's talk about absolutely. what's wrong with sweating. What's wrong with sweating? There's nothing you, wrong with I just don't personally enjoy it. But sweating is <laughs> a great detox out. process. Good, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like and your it's natural, natural way to get rid of it. Yeah. And the heat panels just help with that. We That's just cool. crank them up to 80 or 90 I didn't know degrees. if it like softened up your hamstrings a little bit more yeah. and your muscle tissue to where you can stretch a little sure. bit more. But yeah, it can not. help with that, um, especially like in the colder months yeah. when you're coming in shivering. Right. Uh, the heat panels definitely help you warm up through the muscles. And then, yeah, by the end of class, you're just pouring sweat. But it's also a really nice relaxation process, too, because when your body goes through that, by the time you get to Shavasana and you're ready to relax, there's more of like a come down from it. So, That's true. Yeah, people That's like that a lot. 
Shavasana is my favorite pose. Yes, me too. Just lay there. Me too, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about breathing, because you know, a lot of people don't breathe well. Correct. So you may be listening right now, and you're probably like, just right, breathing very shy. shallowly, like, but you've got lungs below, like, your whole body, right? right. Like they down go into pretty your stomach. low, like yeah, down almost to your belly the bottom of the rib cage. Yeah, exactly. Let's do a little, let's do, you want to do a little breathing? Yeah. Right, teach us, yeah. take some people through right now. Okay. If absolutely. you're listening, just we're going to start breathing together. Yeah. We're going to feel better. So I always Relax. like to start by just sitting up nice and straight because I'm okay. always like slouching. Let me get, yep, um, yep. <laughs> so you have to open up your lungs as much as possible. Okay. Relax the shoulders, drop them down the back a little bit. I always close my eyes just because it helps me focus on the breath. Mm -hmm. Um. And then just start by inhaling through the nose and expanding. So drawing the breath all the way down into the bottom of your lungs, maybe holding it for a second or two if that's comfortable for you, and then slowly exhaling all of that air back out through the nose. The key to this kind of breathing is really to feel your abdomen, your belly rising and falling with the inhales and exhales. Mm. So it's less about the chest and mm -hmm. more about the lower abdomen. And you can even put your hands, like one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, and try to keep that hand that's on your chest as still as possible. And just let it all come from the belly area. And you can do that as many times as you need to. Usually three to five even is enough to like reset and get you kind of dropped into your body, but like I feel, like that, I feel a lot better. I feel so energized good. and yeah. like you're getting bad stuff out again too. Absolutely, like, if yeah. If you don't go down into your lower process. lungs, like that bad air is just sitting down there. Right, and it, it stagnates. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different poses too that you can do to help open your chest and your lungs up mm -hmm. and that can exacerbate the benefits from it. Well, let's talk about benefits of yoga while we're in this. Oh, there's, there's too many to name. Um, <laughs> We've got a little time. Yeah, we've got some time. So my favorite are like the mental and emotional benefits from okay. it, just being able to relax. To Let's talk about centering like yeah. while you're, and then we'll get into the benefits for, because for me, I'm like centering, you're talking about it, but people don't maybe know what that means. Yeah, right? yeah. So centering, um, I consider that like tuning into your own body, tuning mm. the world out and just being aware of what's going on in your body. Um, and I stress this a lot in my classes is being non-judgmental. So noticing what's happening, but not judging it, not labeling it, not being like, oh, I'm tight here and that's a bad thing. Right. I'm sore here. I can't and touch that's a my toe. Thing. And yeah, that makes I need me to mad. change this or yeah. fix that. Yeah, just kind of noticing okay. and existing and like allowing yourself to be in that space the way that you are. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have that established, it's a lot easier to move through the poses too because you're not judging yourself based on how it looks or whether the two sides of your body are symmetrical. I talk about this a lot too, um, because we kind of expect the sides of our body to perform and feel the same, but a lot of times they don't, um, especially if you've had an injury or something like that, it's just not going to be the same and that's okay. Mm -hmm. What, where the issue is, is when you ex have that expectation and then force your body into things that it's not ready for or not prepared for, and that's when injuries happen. I was going to say that maybe causes injury there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah so just, the, the key is just kind of just feeling your body, where you're at, and then just enjoying that space. Yeah. And the more you do it, too, you'll you'll grow and stretch absolutely. and, and yeah. get into it. Okay. And we see that a lot with new people come in. Well, I've heard the term a it. lot and I kind of figured that was it, like getting into the center of your being and core and just opening up and yeah. realizing where you're at and who you are and exactly. what's coming in. And and then also like pushing out the world, like we get a million notifications and synth, you know, just senses. Our senses are going off all the time, yes. processing data and light and feelings and temperature and people and yeah and thoughts that's and a big thoughts. one too and so like constantly and just sitting there and trying to get into a still and quiet place in a loud and loud loud and noisy world it's yeah. hard to do it is hard it's much easier said than done the more you do it the easier it gets yep. um but people who are new to it a lot of times have trouble in shavasana like some people say that's the hardest pose because you're not doing anything you're not moving you you can think you can mm -hmm. let your mind wander but a lot of people have trouble with that um, not, yeah so it's, it's interesting it's just, yeah. i think it's just very interesting because you're like why couldn't i just sit by myself and right and in silence in silence yeah. but it's tough yeah, yeah. absolutely takes Talk, practice yeah 
yeah, so uh, talk about some of the other benefits besides being grounded and centered. And yeah, um, that's that's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And then if you do that over time, it just expands throughout your life and you're able to come back to yourself when you're stuck in like rush hour traffic or something. Um, but of course, there's a lot of physical benefits too. So you can increase your range of motion or flexibility, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of people think about when they think of yoga. Mm -hmm. um, but you absolutely do not need to be flexible to start yoga. Um, it's just one of the benefits of it. And then when your muscles are open and more flexible like that, you're less prone to injury. Uh, that's another big benefit of it is just that bodily awareness. You're going to be safer moving throughout your daily life, whether you're lifting groceries out of your car or working out at the gym or whatever. If you have that bodily awareness mm -hmm. because you've moved your body and noticed what that felt like as you did it, you're going to be less prone to injury, which is great, especially as we age. Um, it's a huge part of like aging gracefully and safely. And I feel you, sister. I'm getting older. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great for that though. And we have a lot of clients that are 70 plus in the studio and they could kick my butt. I'm very impressed with our clients. Um, and they just get themselves there like every day, multiple times a week, they're in there and they're working and they are uh, really inspiring to me too, to see people being active at that age and taking care of their bodies. It's, um, yeah, it's so good. Like being able to stretch and the more you do it, the better you feel. Yeah, kind of exactly. Yeah. And it's a lifelong practice. How old um, do you need to be to start? Um, you can be any age. So we, at the studio, we say that you should be 18 to come in by yourself. Otherwise okay. you have to have a signature from a parent or guardian. Um, but if somebody wants to bring their kids in to practice with them, as long as the kids aren't disruptive, they are totally welcome. Okay. Um, we also work with some of the schools in Johnson City. We do the after school yoga with the homework clubs, um, which is fun. And I love, kids are crazy, right? But yeah. uh, yoga is so good for them too, because yeah. they are stressed. They've had a long, hard yeah. day at school. They've got all these social things that they're trying to figure out and deal with. Um, and so while it can be hard for them to like mellow out and really drop in to practice yoga, it's, it's great for them. And even if they're just like sitting there on their mat in Shavasana the whole time, if that's what they need, do it, like go for it, take a rest. Right. There's no judgment here. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, we want to take care of you and help you Yeah. in whatever situation you're going through. Absolutely. Yeah. How old can you be? If you're 100 and listening to the podcast. Yeah, come on in. Roll on in. <laughs> come on in, yeah. Honestly, our, our front studio is ADA compliant. We've had some people in wheelchairs come in um, and we can absolutely do chair yoga. We used to That's have cool. it regularly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we also offer private yoga classes. So if you're in that kind of a situation, but you still want to practice, just schedule a private and we'll cater the whole class around you and what your needs are. So. I had an aunt from England, and I think she was like 80 and could still do a handstand. Oh, like, my gosh. She was amazing. Yeah, that's so impressive. Yeah, well, I think she did it every day, and that's yeah. why she could do it every day. So exactly. The people at the gym, we talk about it. We're like, if we do this every day of our lives, we'll be able to do this every day of our lives, mm -hmm. which is good. That's how it works. So, yeah, Body's good, in motion, right? Right. you got to keep them moving and keep them energized and working on your muscle tone all the time. Yeah. So did you go to like Tibet and learn from some Tibetan yogi master? Like I've got some vision of you climbing a mountain and learning like, yeah, from Kung Fu Panda or something. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. How did you learn to become a yoga instructor? Um, I did my teacher training here at DYC. Okay. Kim was the main, like the lead trainer for okay. it, but she brought in some other like guest speakers occasionally. But most of what I've learned about teaching has been from Kim and also from taking other people's classes. Okay. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, Cause you get good ideas. You're laying there or they're having you do some transition. You're like, Ooh, this is cool. This, this nice. is a yeah. fun, cause everybody has a different way of doing right. it. Um, so we always encourage our instructors to take each other's classes too, because you learn new things all the time. That's so. cool. Now you yeah. guys offer instruction there. Like if I'm wanted to become a yoga instructor or a listener wanted to become a yoga instructor, you yeah. can do that through your program. Yes. Right? Yeah. We have our first teacher training coming up. It starts in April. Okay. Um, it runs through September. It's like nine weekends, but it's kind of spread out to give people that flexibility. Um, yeah, and we, our lead trainer for that one is going to be Cassie Shaver. She is great. She's very experienced and she's teaching tonight at the studio actually. Cool. But, yeah, we're really excited. Do you have to have any training. prior yoga experience? No. So you could just no. be like, 
I want to be just a yoga instructor. Show up, yeah, and exactly. Boom, just show up it's, and you learn how to do it. Yeah, and it's great too for just learning a lot more about yoga, the history and the practice of it, and alignment is a big point of the trainings. Uh -huh. um, so even if you don't want to teach, and a lot of people do the trainings just to learn more about it, um, and you'll definitely learn more about it. It's very immersive. Yeah, um, and you said it's how many weeks? It's nine different weekends. Oh, weekends. Yeah, but okay. they're not consecutive, so gotcha. they're spread out. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's fun, and I had a great experience at my teacher training. Where yeah, you bond with the other trainees, and it's a good time. So that's fun for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you see? How do you see the downtown yoga center growing in the future? Do you have some goals? Set? We do. We have some goals. We have some plans. Big um, plans. I love big it. plans. Yeah. Currently, um, so the teacher training is one part mm -hmm. of that because this is our first one under our ownership, gotcha. which is why we're excited. Cool. But we're also starting to factor in some Pilates. Um, one of our yoga instructors is also getting her Pilates certification. Cool. So we're offering that. Right now we have Pilates twice a week at the studio. It's um, Friday nights and then Tuesday mornings okay. early. Uh, and it's beginner Pilates for now, but she's getting her intermediate and then we'll go on to get the reformer training, which is what I'm really excited about because there's no Pilates reformer studios in the area. And I don't even know what that is. What is a, re ah, is a like, reformer? So I'm not a big Pilates Is that person. like if you're addicted to Pilates, they'll reform you? <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. Like just calm down with it's your Pilates. It's a program. Yeah. <laughs> step by step. It's yes. a 12-week program. Yeah. Calm down. That's right. Um, no, the reform is actually a an instrument. Um, it kind of looks like a massage table, but like on steroids, it's got all like a trapeze instrument to it. It's Pretty cool. I haven't okay. done one yet, which yeah. is why we're sending somebody else to get her certification so she can teach us about this. If you make it back, we'll look exactly. at doing it. But yeah, if not, it was nice one. knowing you. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's it's getting really big in larger cities, too. Um, and we've had people asking us, like, hey, do you guys do Pilates? And we decided we wanted to do Pilates. So we're going to start offering that. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll have some reformers classes available. That's cool. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah, so perfect. yoga, Pilates, any other practices or different things? or Yeah, um, we have pop-ups and like workshops occasionally. Okay. So recently we had a sound healing workshop with Andrea. Um, have you ever done sound healing before? Um, I have a friend who has the bowls. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. And he is, a, and then he's got a gong too. Uh -huh. uh, Gongs are gosh, cool. we love it. He's yeah. great. Anyway. It's super fun. That's, that's all it is. Um, she comes in with her different instruments and we'll switch between them and just kind of guide you through this meditation, but with sound. And it's so, it's cool. It's just super cool. It is really cool. Yeah. And the, the science behind it is just now kind of catching up mm -hmm. to what we sort of already knew about like the healing properties of sound, which yeah, yeah the whole thing's really neat, but we offer things like that occasionally. Um, we're also doing uh, kitten yoga is coming up. We're working on getting, getting it scheduled for March. That sounds like a lot of fun. Those are fun, yeah. Carly, no, we can't. We can do the yoga, but we're not going to bring the kitten home. Not bringing home a cat. No, we, yeah. Yeah. We've got two awesome puppies. So okay, we're good. that's fair. That's we're good, but you can adopt a kitten. You can adopt what you the kittens, saying, right? yeah. We've been partnering lately with Tiny Miracle Kitten Rescue, um, and they will just bring a litter of adoptable kittens. Uh, they unleash them in our studio. <laughs> um, I avoid it because I'm allergic to cats, ah. but people love this. Though. Oh they my just gosh, turn them I loose. love kittens. Yeah, so that adorable. sounds great. Like you come and hang out with kittens yeah. and then you- Do some yoga, and bond give them with back. the kitten. Yeah, or and somebody then, takes them home. Yeah, you, if you bond with a certain one, you can take it home with you. So. There you go, yeah. that's fun. It is, it's super fun. People Let's talk about that. pricing or mm -hmm. like memberships or how does it work? Yeah. So our most popular uh, pricing option is probably our introductory introductory student offer. Okay. Um, it's three weeks for 35 and you can do unlimited classes for three weeks. It's a great way for new students to just figure out what they like, which mm -hmm. instructors they like, which classes, etc. Um, and then we have a regular membership. It's unlimited monthly. It, it's like three months at a time, $89 a month. Uh, we can also just do buy the class. Some people just come in for one class at a time or you can do class packs. So we have a lot of different options there. If I want to come in for kitten yoga, how much is it? Yeah. Um, the kitten yoga is priced as a workshop just sure. because we're donating money. Because we got money. kittens. We exactly. Got exactly. Kitten food and... Yeah. All and we do stuff. donate the money to the TMKR, so it goes straight to them. But um, the, those are usually, I think, 25 Okay. something like that. That's not bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And then just our standard classes are a drop-in rate of 19. 19 per class. So it makes sense to become a member or do yeah, like exactly. a package or something like that. Yeah, if you're going to do more than one class a week, the membership is probably best. Do you see yourself franchising out and having like multiple yoga centers maybe, all across the, the country or yeah. <laughs> Tri-Cities maybe? Yeah, maybe across the Tri-Cities. Yeah, um, you could have Kingsport downtown, Bristol downtown. Right, exactly. Downtown Yoga Center, downtown where? We don't know. That's right. Downtown anyway, Jonesboro. Exactly. Irwin. Yep, yep. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, we're, uh, my husband and I live in Jonesboro actually, and I've talked about like, wouldn't it be so cool to just walk from our house to the yoga studio and then walk back home? That'd so, be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah, it's and on good the radar. for you and exactly. save some gas money, exactly. which is always good. Yep. What, um, who are some people who have inspired you in your life to get to where you are today that you might want to go, hey, thank you? Yeah, uh, my parents. Like, my parents first and the foremost. Best. Yeah, they're the best. Um, I love my parents. I've had some really powerful, like, female role models that I've gotten to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at ETSU for a year or two uh, right after I graduated college and in the public health department. Um, worked with some really inspiring women there. Dr. Slauson was great and uh, met one of my closest friends there. So it's nice to work with like groups of strong, empowering women. It's yeah. just really cool. Um, I worked a corporate job briefly before I got into the yoga studio ownership. Mm -hmm. um, corporate was not for me, but I had a really great um, supervisor and role model there. Her name was Noreen. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I just like being around people like yeah. that. Even if the job isn't something that you're enjoying, if you're exposed to people like that, mm -hmm. it's it's just really inspiring. So. Yeah, it is, and I think you're, you know, you're the sum of the books you read and the people you hang out with. Absolutely. And so it's Absolutely. it's good to hang out with great people, and yeah. I'm sure they're they're glad to give that that to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's say you're somebody listening is wanting to start their own yoga center in downtown. Tallahassee, I don't know where that came from. But anyway, uh, how would they get started? What would be some advice you'd give them? Some advice. Um, practice yoga. Because it sounds like go to a you're yoga center need to and just calm work the your heck way down in. <laughs> when you are starting a business, you're going to need to practice the yeah. yoga center every day. Exactly. Um, our, one of the biggest uh, benefits or helps for us was just the team that we surrounded ourselves with, the other instructors that were there. Um, we absolutely couldn't have done it without them. They have their own, you know, clientele, their own people that they bring to the studio, which is obviously really valuable. Um, but yeah, just surround yourself with good people and build from there. Mm -hmm. um, we're also working, like I said, with Cassie Shaver to do the teacher training. And it's nice to have people that are really inspired um, and just like excited for things like because yeah. they bring in cool ideas sure like oh i hadn't thought of that you know, yeah let's look that's into a synergy it. from a group of folks that exactly yeah yeah and people that can give you feedback and help mm -hmm. along the way so yeah yeah it, it takes a village or something like that yeah. so do you offer online classes can you like watch yeah. online and do stuff from home if yeah you don't um, come out? we have in the past especially over the pandemic um the previous owner was doing live stream yeah. classes um, and we've since stopped, but we're actually looking into it again, um, just because there's been a little bit more interest. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking into that. Are you on the YouTube? We are not currently on YouTube. We we're, might be. We're we need to get you on the YouTube. Yeah, You're on the YouTube on right the now. YouTube. Did you know that? Oh, hey, YouTube. <laughs> hey, YouTube. Hey, YouTube. What's up? Yeah. Cool. Well, we made it then. We did. <laughs> we made it on the tube. Um, what, how do people connect with you, Rachel? Like, or how would they get in, like, get into a class? Yeah. What's the easiest way? Um, I always direct people to our website. It's just downtownyogacenter.com. Uh, from there, it's got all of our social links, but it's also connected with our booking platform. So they can just go directly to our website and see our schedule and book it from there. So that's the easiest way to do it. I love it. We I also have an app though. Um, just search for Downtown Yoga Center in the app store and we should pop up. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Everybody's it's easy got for an our app. members. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All the cool people. All the cool kids have an app. Um, and then what is something that I should have asked you on here that I didn't Ooh, before we get into the speed round of oh, like gosh. Okay. different foods and fun things to do? Okay. Um, something you should have asked me. Um, or something you want to share that you're like, oh, hey, I forgot to talk about that. Yeah. Or you might not have anything. I don't know. Hmm. We can come back. We'll come back to it. Okay, pause. I'll, I'll we'll let it, back. I'll mull it over. All right. You and your husband, what's his name? Nick. Nick, hey Nick. Yeah. All right, Nick and you guys are going out to eat. Now, you may eat very, you said you don't eat a lot of meat, so you probably eat very healthy. So where's your, your favorite spot to go to eat dinner? Like, you guys aren't going on a date. 
Yeah, honestly, timber. Either that or juniper. Yeah. Um, juniper, if it's this like a special occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timber once a week minimum. <laughs> oh man. Oh, they're good. He loves their hamburger. Um, they're old fashioned. I yeah, love a they've good. They've got old great fashioned. drinks and mocktails too. There. Yeah, you don't you don't timber. have to drink. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Um, where are you gonna go get a cup of coffee in town? Coffee doesn't have to be downtown. Yeah, be yeah. Um, Dos Gatos is my go-to. Yeah, I, their cortado is amazing. Um, everything they do is good, but yeah. Dos Gatos. I'm trying to get Dick, the owner, on here. Yeah, you so should. So next time you see him, go, okay, I did I'll it, let him know. And I made it through, and you can be on here. I'll let him know. All right, you and Nick are going to get dessert somewhere. Dessert. Ooh. Ooh, do you eat much dessert? A little, yes. Yeah? I, I have a big sweet tooth. We're trying to Me cut too. back on sugar a little bit, I but I, I miss it. I'm like addicted to the sugar. I'm right, drinking my sweet right. tea. I'm just like, this is... I'm a, I'm a pastry person, yeah. so I really like Lazy Lady. Yeah, because crumb's good. gone, right? Yes. So Lazy yeah. Lady. Lazy Lady's really good. Um, Marin, she is, she can make some awesome <laughs> She's stuff. impressive, yeah. Uh, Nick's loving insomnia cookies over by Earth Fair. What? Yeah. I've been um, there. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, they're open like till three in the morning or something. <laughs> hence insomnia. I think I've seen them. Yeah, I was in, a, um, I think Phoenix and I saw them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're pretty cool. But yeah. Yeah, around downtown, I'd say Lazy Lady probably. Lazy Lady. Okay. I like it. Well, did you come back to anything else? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's okay. I was busy talking. That's all right. All right. Um, let's go. Do you go to any of the ETSU basketball games? I'm not a big basketball person. Okay. We go to the football games sometimes, though. Okay. We like those a lot. Go, go Bucks. Go Bucks, yeah. Go Bucks. Okay, so what, the last question is what just gets you like? Fired up. Yes, we fired up. Go, let's go time. Like, oh. it's getting ready to go on the field and you're just like, let's go. Okay, okay. Um, I get fired up about a lot of things. It I depends like on how many shots of espresso I've had from <laughs> Dos Gatos. Um, I get lots of ideas, but I really enjoy um, planning or thinking about how the community could improve. Mm. A few months ago at this point, somebody came in um from the i want to say the john johnson city homelessness outreach center yeah. something like that and okay. i cornered her in our studio for like half an hour just chatting about like how we can help with that situation you know and how the downtown businesses can kind of get involved mm -hmm. um and i just i have lots of different and random ideas about that but um yeah, just getting involved with the immediate like micro community uh -huh. here in downtown and then spreading out. But yeah, that that's the most recent thing I've gotten fired up about. Yeah, I'm fired up about it too. I serve on the Dunn City Housing Authority okay. uh, board right. and it's just near and dear to my heart. I love those people and yeah. love our area, love housing. That's my job. I mm -hmm. sell houses and I just think it's um, a special intimate place where people get to you know, do life at your house, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like your little protective space. And yeah. for people who don't have so that, you're like, you'll drive by and you're like, that. my heart breaks for them. Right. And a lot of people choose that lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, but I think a lot of it's um, sometimes mental too. So yeah. it's a tough pro. I mean, problem, it's, it's I don't think we're going to solve it here, but I love that you want to help do that. And um, yeah, so maybe we can coordinate, yeah. collaborate. For sure. And, um, yeah. and so thank you for all you do yeah. for downtown. Yeah. Thanks for all the yoga stuff. Um, yeah, I'm excited to come check out your studio you should, sometime. You Carly and I will come, we'll come do it. We'll yeah. come do some yoga, especially with the kittens. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that, that one. Goats, good. I'm like, I don't know. But kittens. I'm yeah. like, kittens, kittens are a little, lot smaller, a lot more gentle right. than goats. I mean, who yeah. was like hitting you in the head? That right. doesn't sound like fun. Yeah. And chewing on your clothes. Yeah, this is not it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure me. meeting you. Hopefully, listeners, you've enjoyed getting to know Rachel in downtown yoga. And I'm excited for you to come visit her, get online, connect with her. Are you on the Instagram? Yeah, we're on the gram. Stuff? You're on yep. the gram. On the gram, on Facebook. On the gram, on the it. Facebook, <laughs> on the yeah, MySpaces. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to move here and hang out with Rachel on the regular we can find you a loft apartment. There are a bunch of them right around the corner from you. Yeah, there are. And you yeah. just walk downstairs to your We thing have a every lot of people day. from the That's lofts. right. Yeah. Holler at me. I'll find you a downtown loft, connect you with Rachel. Or if you want to rent a place, we, we, we do a lot of that too. So anyway, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and thanks for listening.